uh, I talked about how I like statistics. Huh. And then, you know, they said statistics was developed by the Ku Klux Klan <laughs> to promote <laughs> racism. What are your views on that? You should be the one driving the interview. Hmm. But in my experience, at least that's not the case because they they have the end call on what to discuss. Yeah. So they drive the interview. If you feel like you're driving the interview, it's because they're letting you drive it. After all of this, would you say it was all worth it? <laughs> Hi. Welcome to another episode of Life's Great and Other Lies. I am Bipasha Tiwari and uh, Life's Great and Other Lies is a podcast where I sit down and talk to anybody that I want or talk about anything that I want. Um on today's episode I have Shrey Gupta with me. Hi Shrey. Hi. <laughs> so Shrey and I were at I am Ranchi. Um we were a part of the first batch of IPM at I am Ranchi. and shrey called me a couple of days back and he said that you know what i want to talk a little bit about cat from the perspective of somebody who's a general male <laughs> who went through the process and rather than what's generally documented of you know how to crack cat and score 99 percentile and you know success stories and this that just talk about the journey and what really happens in it and honestly like a lot of conversations have happened there's a lot of content that's out there a lot of content that we consumed at our time but i feel like there's something new in this conversation especially when it comes in the perspective of somebody who was at an iim and was aspiring for a better iim right somebody who knows what it means to be like a b school student who has observed mba yeah. folks so um shrey do you want to give the viewers a little bit more context Yeah yeah sure so i'm shrey i'm shrey gupta and you know for context i was with bipasha actually in 10th grade at dps <laughs> yeah. we are from the same school as well yeah he was one uh, year junior and despite being from the same school we did not know of each other's existence the most dps thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i did my 10th in the cambridge board yeah. uh, i got an 83.75 percent there hmm. 12th at state board because huh. i was a ge aspirant huh. as well and i got a 91.67 percent there huh. and now at i am ranchi i have a prox uh, 75 percent huh. profile so yeah. that's my academic profile uh, i did well in cat yeah. i got a 99.92 percent in cat which is amazing for people who don't know that's like so rank wise huh. uh, it's yes, around this is a better move <laughs> it's around the 200 rank out of 3 lakh <laughs> <laughs> it sounds bizarre to say that out loud it it still sounds strange <laughs> to me i i i honestly did not expect itna well mm-hmm. in cat um, i i'll get more into that later yeah. but so the prompt for this episode right the point of this episode uh, as you said a lot of cat prep and cat mm-hmm. motivation conversations like this have happened where uh, someone like me who has a high percentile talks about this but i want to more cover my journey and my experience and yeah. the nitty gritties one goes through as a cat aspirant yeah. rather than give you motivation of this is why you should uh, crack cat yeah i want i want that part of it to be covered which in my experience has not is not that public true right and additionally i think this is something that i used to wonder and i wondered about it only once i got into ipm but what does preparing for cat and what does you know after cat journey look like for somebody who got into ipm because mm-hmm. i we know about a lot of people like vedika manak there right. is um there are so many people who are already in that space who have gotten into better colleges after ipm correct, correct. but what did their journey look like what right. really happened right right exactly i feel yeah. i was very curious to know that <laughs> and some of those conversations probably exist on some corner of the internet right this is us filling that gap at least from the perspective of i am ranchi ipm kids right 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 okay right. so um let's start off from the start right cat prep right so how was it <laughs> initially so when i been cat was a thing i think this time of year now may Huh. ish is when yeah. cat sort of starts becoming big so last year this time huh. i had to take a call on whether or not i had to give cat and huh. i talked to some of our mba seniors i talked huh. to some other people and they said my profile as a general male fresher with average acads i would say huh. 
the, is, is not really an ideal profile for CAT. It doesn't yeah. fit in. Uh, the returns for the effort I would put in, I probably wouldn't see. Hmm. So basically the end result was I sort of looked around and with the, my profile, I sort of started seeing, okay, what calls come at what percentage? Hmm. And I, I, I saw that, okay, this might not be the best fit. And I, I was convinced on not giving cat very, hmm. very initially. Hmm. But, <laughs> you know, my mom sort of went, no, 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 you should, you should come Bangalore, huh. come to I am Bangalore. Huh. And uh, the, there was some parental pressure and somewhere along the way, I sort of looked at it in a way of, okay, I'm not doing anything else right now. Hmm. I'm doing IPM at I'm Ranchi, but uh, you know, a lot of people are making content, a lot yeah. of people are starting startups, yeah. uh, this and that. I was in a few clubs, but that uh, that also finished by this point, the work yeah. that they had. And I was I had free time. Yeah. So I was like, why not this? Huh. What am I doing that like will get better returns? And I decided, okay, fine, let's give it a shot. Huh. Because there's no downside. Yeah. That was my logic behind giving cat in the first place huh. that there is no downside i have i'm i want to do and i have to do an MA anyway huh. why not try for something better and uh, as you said from the point of an ipmat student i feel like i prepared a lot for ipmat huh. so i was a je aspirant but in 12th covid hit and suddenly i didn't have to give boards huh. And honestly, J.E. I mean, <laughs> there, huh? there, there was a lack of interest mm. and a lack of aptitude also in some uh, chemistry. I was not very, friend. very, no interest, no aptitude, nothing. <laughs> and uh, I took a leap of faith. Mm. I told my parents that I don't want to do J.E. Mm. There's no boards. Mm. I'm going to leave science after preparing J.E. for close to four years. A lot of money. Huh. I said Ki, it won't happen. I'm trying. I'm gonna do it, Matt. Huh. And my parents didn't know what it Matt is, huh. so I had to educate them and get them on board. And the only reason they got on board was because they could also see, iske lachan theek nahi lagi. Right? Huh. They were also like, okay, nahi ho raha huh. And obviously, Indore nahi hua. Ranchi is not a far bet from there, but. Yeah. Okay results from there, but a lot of cat prep came from there because I prepared hard for a year because that was a leap of faith. Wo nahi to kuch nahi. <laughs> and there were very few seats. So matlab, I put in a lot of work and uh, although it might not have fully paid off there, it may have paid, paid off in cat, cat. Huh. because I didn't have to go into subjects in nitty gritty that I'm learning geometry for the first time types mm -hmm. although nobody does but I felt ki two and a half years since it met I could jump straight into mocks mm. and that's what I did I gave 20-25 mocks for around 50-60 days mm. almost an alternate day mock system mm. and uh, that was my cat prep huh. and then you know obviously the D-Day huh. rolled around yeah. and Mine went really well. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that was the cat prep wala stage Haan. for me. And actually, I want to talk about one thing here. Cat is one of the only exams that gives you one shot in a year. Yeah. So, there's only one slot. J K two or three are there. There were four when I gave it. GMAT, ke GMAT you can take ke it. Infinite. And, yeah. and then it's valid also for only one year. Yeah. Hmm. So... Not GMAT a very forgiving exam. Not a very forgiving exam. Us maybe sectional cutoff bhi hai, total bhi hai. Yeah. GE doesn't have sectionals, I don't think. I don't, I didn't, I, I didn't, didn't prepare, I'm not I didn't sure. prepare. I'm not sure. Haan. But just a GMAT maybe overall score they take, right? No, there are sections, depends on your colleges. College, but yeah. okay, okay. But either way, not a very forgiving exam in terms of if you have a bad D-Day. Yeah, you can't do anything, it's... Hmm. And next I think, year i think you can see that in hamara batch ka profile also some yeah. people did really well some people didn't do that well yeah and wouldn't have made i ranchi whereas obviously one system a similar system decided that they are capable enough, enough to, to be at yeah, 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 yeah right and then some people got into very very high caliber institutes yeah also. there are people who got into a they got, got into b b c, c fms yeah. all of them all of them yeah. l all of them yeah right so uh, yeah, so that's where that almost luck factor also plays in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so cat ho gaya, and then after that, results came out. I remember the vibe in the hostel the day, the results. It felt... Because there were people on two spectrums. People who did not 
score as well <laughs> as they thought they would and then the people who scored exceptionally well right so there was this like really weird mixed vibe in the hostel mixed mahol talk about like you seeing your results because i know there's a really funny story over there <laughs> so uh, for real experience honestly sabse pehle the thing that comes is they give you your answers and the answer sheet ha huh. and uh, oh, what i did was i took my time with it so while i was taking my results lot of people were shouting and huh. screaming um, positive and negative huh. uh, and this and that but i took my time with it i wrote all of my answers down on a paper hmm. and then i started checking them hmm. one question at a time yeah and uh, so my uh, english was my best section and i start <laughs> you know checking the english answer huh. and seven eight questions in i have ticked all the answers huh. and i genuinely went back and checked am i checking with the answer keys or am i just looking at my <laughs> answers again <laughs> that it's it's just all right huh. i mean uh, fortunate enough huh. for me right but yeah it was surreal experience and you know even after i came out of my room and i, I had a really good result huh. and i told one person huh. and i remember i told like two people huh. I this uh, after that I went to Nest Cafe yeah. to eat and uh, Prithika who is another batchmate who I don't talk to that much huh. came comes up to me and congratulates me and I was like huh, <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> because it I mean it traveled very fast yeah <laughs> because I mean 107 huh, was yeah. the raw score 107 That's was a, the raw score like wow <laughs> anybody because everybody was preparing for cat and then everybody eventually find found out how the exam is right right, right. we all have had that experience and right. results came out so seeing somebody else do so well you obviously <laughs> get excited cuz that's your batchmate right. at the end of the day right ha yeah. theek hai okay this happened after yeah. that let's so, start talking about the yeah so you know post cat if you have done well i i got very excited at it so well i talked to a few uh, courses i bought an interview course started prep right away Haan. because I felt I had a very good shot to my then dream college, which was I am Bangalore, huh. uh, because I was very interested in business analytics, and yeah. they have a specialized course. Yeah, right. So I got very excited, and I was preparing, and then the results started coming in. So Lucknow hosted CAT in 2023. Hmm. They had the first result. Yeah, and uh, I didn't make it, huh. and. Uh, that was my first question mark in the entire cat process mm. because that was the first place where i felt okay what what just happened mm. because the maths didn't make sense to me i was ranked 200 ha huh. and you know there's 800 seats still lucknow right approximately yeah. in the core programs yeah. and i didn't even make abn 800 unreserved seats. 800 unreserved seats yeah. approximately yeah right in and uh, then they call four to five times those candidates hmm. and at a 200th rank i haven't even gotten an interview call for their secondary course leave the yeah. core course ha, ha, ha. so and uh, you know then you went into the nitty gritties of why that was happening right i went into the nitty gritties i i poured over the lucknow form right ha. and i realized that okay lucknow what they do is they sort of normalize your 12th score ha uh Uh, they do something called a central limit theorem which huh. basically they plot your result on a graph hmm. and give you a assign you percentile hmm. so i have a 91.67 percentile in 12th hmm. now that 91.67 percentage per sorry sorry huh. sorry, sorry, sorry my my huh. yeah 91.67 percentage in 12th yeah. in state board of karnataka yeah now uh that is, so in lucknow if you look at the 12th result if yeah. your percentile falls below the 80th percentile of that particular board of that particular board of that particular uh, subject stream, stream, ha, stream yeah stream then you get a zero and at a 91.67 percentile <sighs> i had gotten a zero and uh, what's more killer is if i had gotten a one ha even a one at yeah. an at a 90 plus percentile i would have made the cut off because there is also public you could see by how much you had missed and i had missed by approx 0.7 the interview cut off so you know that expectation of uh, whatever profile that mm. uh, at a 90% out of 10 marks yeah that i i can't even score one at a 90 plus percent is something i didn't have the foresight to yeah which is i feel reasonable <laughs> yeah <laughs> right yeah. it's it's uh, you really have to pour over that form to get to that detail mm-hmm. and really have to understand the working behind it yeah 
And uh, now this is one form. Each form has its own nitty-gritty. Yeah. Each form, ha like Bangalore uh, has a higher percentage on work X. I mean, there was that meme that we were talking about that's going viral. <laughs> right, right, right. So, I am Rohatak Wali. Haan, so this was almost a motivation for this <laughs> episode. It's this yeah. meme. <laughs> so, right. I mean, every IM has like very, very specific guidelines of what kind of candidates they're looking for, essentially. Exactly. And every profile is different and they have they have defined something to be the ideal profile huh. and it's whether or not you fit into that yeah uh, yeah so uh, Lucknow came in and then Ahmedabad came in and then Bangalore came in hmm. and that was a very low point for me because I didn't make any of the three yeah and Bangalore came in third and I was like I was like, okay, Lucknow, Ahmedabad, I want Bangalore. Yeah. <laughs> and then Bangalore also I didn't get in. And then, you know, three rejections on that percentile, really, I was very dejected. <laughs> I was very nirash. Understandably so. Because this was a best case scenario for me. This was the acha. I prepared for CAT and it went really well. A best case scenario with given my current profile. Mm. Right? And then as well, I am not, I haven't gotten a single call yet. I haven't, that was very, I was very angry with the system huh. because I didn't know who else to blame it to. Because yeah. I tried searching and I didn't, I couldn't find where. Because when you look at my profile also, our grading, I'm at 75%, yeah. but it's not like a DO grading where yeah. it's easier to score higher percentage. Because right? it's there's a, a relative grading system. It's a relative grading system. Yeah. So I lost marks there. And Cambridge is also a relative grading system. Mm. And I lost marks in 10th for that. Only mm. Indore is the only one who sort of forgives you for that. Okay. There's yeah. no other college that takes Understands that, it, into, takes that account. into account. Okay. Huh. Right. So... I, yeah, so I was sitting there, I was looking at a lot of people getting these calls at lower percentiles than mine, especially like a lot of candidates, uh, female candidates got calls <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> on uh, some lower percentiles and just angry with the system. Yeah, yeah, I was not feeling the best. Which again, like I feel like a lot of these conversations happen behind closed doors about how unfair the system is and I get the unfairness at times. I believe like everybody who's, uh, who doesn't have the so-called benefit would probably feel that the system is unfair. With that being said, it exists for a reason. And which is we can disagree with how the system is being implemented. But I feel like in principle, my idea is hmm. Implementation, I don't know. I don't know. Huh, we can just leave it as maybe it's something worth questioning. Maybe hmm. this is the best system. Yeah. Maybe this is the best system, but maybe it's something worth questioning. That's where <laughs> I will leave but, it at. Yeah, agreed. Uske baad fir, so, when did you restart prep for interviews? Because you right. eventually restarted, right? Right, right. So, uh, ABL came in hmm. and I didn't get And then uh, about a month or so, I was just not in a... I felt interview prep was pointless and this Haan. and that. But uh, CKI came in after that and huh. I got the calls huh. and then you know, sort of picked myself back up after that huh. because I felt, okay, eventually that, okay, maybe it's not the best thing that I was hoping for, but you rarely get exactly what you want in life. True. True. Right? So uh, even though it's not the best thing, it's, mm. these are still some really good institutes that mm. I have a good chance of getting into now. Mm. So about a month or so of, uh, stopping prep, I resume the prep. Hmm. But I think this is another part that is not covered in a lot of cat prep <laughs> channels is how grueling the interview process is. Huh. Because for me, cat was not as hard because cat is okay, one exam on one day, huh. you know that date, and you have a fair knowledge that okay, I have to do XYZ. Huh. This is generally what you're tested on. Exactly. So I have a good idea, I can plan, I can proceed about it in mm. my way whereas interview prep is endless true there is no limit to an interview and cat interviews are not easy they're hard they are yeah. hard interviews mm. right and would you say they're harder than cat harder than cat itself uh, for me the interview prep and interview process was harder than cat itself mm. for me mm. um, not everyone obviously true. everyone has their own skill set but yeah and obviously, there's a reason for CAT interviews being so hard mm. because, uh, you know, 
unlike an engineering college, a management college is also looking at a lot of soft skills. Yeah, they, they don't just want somebody who's good at aptitude-based things. Exactly. Well-rounded person. Chahiye. Exactly, exactly. Because management involves those soft skills. Haan. You you need to go out and present to the world, and you need you need those soft skills, yeah. right? In almost any managerial domain. True. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, yeah, how grueling the process is. There's one that is the prep, hmm. and then there's the other that is the traveling and the locations and all of that, huh. right? Because if you don't have the privilege of living in a metropolitan city, which uh, like uh, in not even all, case. right? Just five or six of the biggest metropolitan yeah, cities. Yeah, it's just in India. Delhi, uh, Kolkata, Bangalore, Mumbai. Those were ha, the mota jo, mota, matlab, initial cash form have, when you fill. Exactly. Those are the options and you get to change them. For, some had Hyderabad, ha. some had some other. But if you're out of these four or five cities, you have to travel. Yeah. And then each interview uh, is on a different date and has its own procedure. Sometimes it clashes. Sometimes it clashed for me. It clashed for me as well. <laughs> I had MDI and IIT Delhi on the same date, same slot. Did you end up giving both? I did, but for giving both, I had to fly to the MDI interview location one week before huh. because they had said no to me on the mail. Huh. So I flew one week before and I had to request to them and they, uh, then I had a meeting with the admission director huh. and I had to request to him and show him all the proofs and then I got a reschedule in. And I had to stay in the same hotel as the process was going on. Just so that this would right. happen. So, <laughs> So uh -huh. that process is very grueling, A, because there's prep going on uh -huh. and that prep can get very hazy on what to prepare and what not to prepare at time. Uh -huh. Then there's that traveling and all of that going on and there's not just the travel, there's all the preparation and the scheduling that goes into it mm -hmm. that, okay, I have to be in Bangalore on this date, but I have these three interviews on Calcutta around this Bangalore date. So how many days should I stay in Calcutta? How many days should I stay in Bangalore? Mm -hmm. When should I come back? Yeah. There were days where I was flying out from the interview location to Bangalore and then giving an interview. Mm -hmm. Stuff uh, the next day or whatever. It was, it's that, right? And all the tickets, the hotels. It, it adds up. It adds up. And then there is also the fact that each college has a different admission form that takes time to fill. Mm. And each college, within each college, each program also sometimes have different forms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I think one thing that we should talk about before even the interview stage is the form filling stage after results come. That keeps, yeah, the form filling stage. It's so, it's like, a very integral part because huh. that is also not uh, very simple. Hmm. Yeah, you have right. like specific essay, three, four essay questions, right. word limits, right. and everybody's looking for this crisp version of exactly. you, exactly. this like story. And then along with that, when the forms come, they don't come one by one. They, they come, come almost together. Almost together. And my biggest issue with it was they ask similar questions, but have different word limits. So I write an answer for one question, which is beautiful at 500 words. Huh. And then they want a 300 word from it. And I'm looking at that 500 word answer on what to remove. And I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Along with that, I think one thing that we talked about was how you kept missing deadlines. You missed yeah. a couple of deadlines. I missed, I missed SPG and deadline yeah. because it was on the same day as uh, MDI. MDI and ka. I just had a wrong idea of end of day and it was on 5 p.m. Huh. So I sat nicely on 7 p.m. to fill the form. <laughs> and then it's like, form and, closed, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I miss the SPG form as well. But yeah, it's, and I think, especially for CAT, it's not straight out of 12th. People are working, people are in colleges. Yeah. Not everyone is on a drop year. Yeah. Right, so there's, there's so much variety a, of what could be an answer to something. There, so there's so much variety of what could be an answer as well as people don't have that much free time. True, People yes. don't have that much disposable time that they can just put into to filling these forms. Huh. Yeah. Right. But anyway, that is how the system is. <laughs> Maybe that is the best way. <laughs> but yeah, that is... And that's part of the experience of it being very tedious. And I wrote close to 5,500 words for essays. Huh. For yeah. all the essays combined, because some answers for the same question I had to redo. Yeah. Because that answer cannot fit into that word limit. Yeah. Right? Along with that, there's an additional layer of when this comes even in the interviews is the kind of candidate that they're looking, looking for. for. So you have to so, fit that answer to Yeah, it. you have to yeah. tweak it or maybe highlight certain points. Like, your, let's hmm. talk about I am Indore. I am Indore. Okay, interviews are notorious for being academically inclined. They ask very 
a cad heavy Very questions true. no matter at what stage of your career you're in even right. work ex ke baad if you're coming for that interview they're still going to ask you ki undergrad mein kya kiya right right and like the same thing you have to reflect in your answer exactly yeah. ki matlab you know what maine acads mein ye kiya this is my inclination right which right, right. is another sort of layer on top of everything exactly exactly and uh, you know compared to koi code which is comparatively holistic ha huh. so yeah that is for sure there for sure so yeah that is the grueling aspect of that interview process it's not as straightforward mm-hmm. as you would expect maybe and when we were discussing earlier matlab interview process ke bhi several aspects we are fresher candidates mm-hmm. so there's only like a cads and then there's you know about yourself and then there's the gk world affairs gk mm-hmm. mein, then again there's that split of like you know static. world affairs and then static stuff right and i remember we were talking and you said you were asked this really specific and odd question yeah yeah what, so what were you asked so anything under the sun so fms i was asked uh, you know what is the stock market in china what is the index called huh. and that is when i have nothing related to finance in my profile huh. at all whatsoever i huh. you know, marketing is in every other sentence huh. and then i have been asked that question and then uh, in koi codes interview i was asked you know okay you've been living in bangalore 20 years ago there was a vulture protection program that was started tell me about that how, how do you answer questions like that how do you prepare for questions like that ha huh. right how do you where do you stop your prep where do you koi code was my first interview ha huh. and uh, now after i am asked that question and i'm saying i don't know he asked me a couple of more questions related to wildlife and i really did not know i have no interest in this subject and i had no idea huh. now do i come out of that interview thinking okay i'm very under prepared i need to prepare what is the thought process that i should have ha huh. because i just ended up co- coming out confused that how should i prepare for this <laughs> right yeah uh, yeah so that was that experience and uh let's talk a little bit about you know your best and your worst interviews like let's give people like an insight into what does an interview actually look like matlab for right. somebody who did ipm right right uske baad fir what are the kind of questions that people are expecting you to answer or have answers to so i think i think we are a very very specific course right? yes and ah. all the professor because you know when they see a btech candidate they have an approximation of what a btech candidate can do and what ah. their profile looks like ha ah. they see an ipm candidate most professors have no idea ha ah. pehle to they don't know what ipm they, is first of all ha ah, they ask you what ipm is and even if you have like uh, if the professor knows what ipm is he is still looking at okay what does ipm produce Huh. what does going into an im right after 12th look like yeah, because yeah, that yeah. that is a question that uh, if you are an im prof you would be very curious about and that reflects True. in the interviews True. every single interview without fail 5 to 6 minutes have been uh, about the course and the structure and uh, what is ipm and what, what did is... you study what did you do exactly and why why do you want to leave im ranchi huh. is also a question that i have been asked without fear yeah. which is a difficult question to answer yeah. very very difficult to convince the professors yeah. that okay there is there are actually you know uh, returns enough to justify leaving an im yeah because i mean i was asked this in my spj mr interview the prof was just like um, give me all reasons give me a reason to leave i am ranchi except for placements <laughs> and of course like you're doing an mba placements is a very huh. big important part of your for degree sure. We, sure. you can't deny that with that being said there are benefits that come from being exposed to a new environment mm-hmm. being exposed to a different culture a different way and how do you convince and we talked about this before how do you convince somebody ki i've actually you know maxed out what i could do in those 3 years right. at this one particular institute right, right right i really need a change of pace i really deserve a shot at your institute exactly 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 so yeah i think that's a good way to present it is that uh, you know opportunities hmm. are sort of exhausted especially when you do your ug in the same college as your pg hmm. there are limited opportunities in any college whether that be a yeah right a will also have more opportunities than most colleges but yeah. still there are those opportunities ha huh. 
So uh, that is a good way to go about it that, okay, I'm looking for fresh opportunities. I've used up the ones that I'm ranchi. Yeah. Yeah, so... But still, it's hard. It's a very hard vote to... Very, very hard. Convince yeah. them. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, they're, they're not convinced. They're never convinced. <laughs> yeah, a good interviewer is never convinced by any answer. <laughs> true, true. That's actually a really interesting point that you bring up. Okay, tell me about like one of your funnest interviews. I think the funnest interview has to be the Koi Code interview that I had for okay. LSM. Okay. Where... Uh, I went into it and the panel, the two professors in the panel, they were just chilling. <laughs> they were just having fun. So uh, they, they, were, they were having especially longer interviews compared huh. to the other panel. Huh. And my interview went even longer. Huh. My interview was close to around 50, 50-ish minutes, I think. 50 minutes. Yeah, around that much, sure. that interview. And huh. we talked about everything under the sun huh. where they would, you know, uh, I talked about how I like statistics. Huh. And then, you know, they said statistics was developed by the Ku Klux Klan <laughs> to promote <laughs> racism. What are your views on that? How Which, did you answer that? Uh, I First of all, I did not know that this is how it was developed. Huh. And uh, so how I answered that was simply, sir, I did not know about this. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't aware. I like the mathematical aspect of it. Huh. I find the numbers pretty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he was like, okay, what do you feel about it? So I said, sir, I'll have to look into it. I don't know. Huh. And But anything they we talked about... We talked about my parents, we talked about what they do, we talked about what I want to do, mm. and just a chill panel, they were cracking jokes all around. They, this, uh, five minutes into the interview, they asked me, how can a 20-year-old be so polished? Something along those lines. Huh. Uh, so, random questions, mm. throwing me off also, but very fun, very bright panel, mm. a good conversation to have. Mm. Similarly, IIT Delhi was the best conversation I've had. Okay. It, was, it was just sort of Almost the conversations we have, right? Huh. So, uh, I think to give more context, so huh. um, the entire IT Delhi interview was in the case study competition that we were in together. Okay, so um, to give like people more context, we entered a case comp like two terms before CAT happened. Yeah, and I remember the conversation we had. Like we were going to the airport. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. notoriously long two-hour airport journey <laughs> of Bangalore we were taking that and we were discussing ki achha kya karna hai, ye hai, wo hai. and you just casually suggested ki you know what there's this one uh, competition I am Bangalore is organizing it chal karte and I said ha theek hai chal karte you're like theek hai you me and Bhavya we'll sign up for this Bhavya is another batchmate of us so um you're like, okay, sign up. Karte hai. Or we were on our way. And then you're like, yeah, you know, cat motivation, jayenge campus, yeah, boy, ghar wapas aane ko milega, <laughs> Bangalore a jayenge. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, that would be fun. And we gave the quiz maze maze mein. <laughs> and uske baad fir result aya. And they said ki, bhai, next round is a on-campus round. Right. We got excited. <laughs> Bhavya and I especially got excited. And Bhavya and I, then and there, were the most... We procrastinate a lot, both of us. But that was the first decision where like, you know what? We need to be on time. Flight ki tickets ye ho jayengi. Humne kar di book. <laughs> and then we get a second mail. Ki there's a elimination now. So literally while I was booking my tickets, <laughs> you come in and you were like, wait, 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 don't book, don't book. There's another round. <laughs> and then for like, we talked to them and they're like, the organizers, they're like, you know what, sorry, this is our fault, but we can't do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to just give the round. And we're like, what if we don't make it? Will you refund us? They're like, no. And at some point, I think it was Bhavya or it was you and you're just like, you oh, have yes. no option. You we just have to go through, have to go through it. And that that whole, let's give people more context so that we can tie it back to the right, interview. Right. What exactly did we do in that competition? Right, right. So uh, basically, we were supposed to make a book pitch yeah. to publishers where we had to come up with a fictional book and a book plot huh. and publish it as if we were publishing it to actual, uh, sorry, pitch it as if we were pitching, pitching it to, it to actual publishing actual publishers. House. Yeah, so that was the entire concept. So we made an entire plot. We uh, made, we made the blurb. We made. You made a three D render. Did I, no, I didn't make a three D render. The cover of the book. It was oh, not a three D okay, render, okay. but yeah, like right. we we tinkered. I remember I tinkered around 
around with like dali ha, and like ha. we had like a fictional author fictional author okay, uh, okay. what was her name uh, uh, some sanchez uh, is adela, adela adela sanchez, sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> and the story like uh, you i think it was a prompt that singla had yeah yeah yeah, yeah that totally. sort of started it but the idea was just so beautiful and i want you to describe it because you're the writer out of the two of us <laughs> and you describe it much better than i can so right huh. so right so the story starts off with like a uh, main character who's this uh, college guy who's a you know nerdy geeky guy likes his electronics yeah. and he is scrolling around on ebay one day looking for something new to tinker with hmm. and he finds a bizarre looking keyboard huh. and he gets it and he is messing around with it and he accidentally presses cont- or whatever while messing around with it he presses control z hmm. and his life rewinds <laughs> yeah by 5 minutes by 5 minutes or whatever the time frame so hmm. we gave the plot right the actual details are whatever yeah. and he messes around with it and looks at okay if control z works what else works yeah. right uh, so if this then what and mm-hmm. uh, all the keyboard shortcuts and uh, so on and so forth ha huh. and then we sort of evolved it into a truman show esque thing mm. that uh, you know suddenly you cut to another character yeah. from the uh, the pov of another character and uh, that this character is like living in the future 2050 2060 yeah. whatever he was a bored guy you yeah, know bored, bored uh, lazy guy lazy genius yes lazy, lazy genius. genius that's what we call lazy him. genius out of his mom's basement yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah so and he's just created this simulation hmm. where he is bored out of his mind and he didn't know what else to do so he just casually says okay let me make a hyper realistic simulation of yeah. life huh. in 2020 hmm. or what like around this time <laughs> 2020 2024 huh. and uh, our main character uh, who's found the keyboard yeah. is in this simulation hmm. uh, so he has made this simulation using ai hmm. so this is what the iit delhi interview was about so in my introduction i mentioned winning this case study comp hmm. and they were like okay what did you do in this case study comp and i mentioned this and the plot and they caught the word ai now ai is a buzzword mm-hmm. right now it's everywhere hmm. so my first Three to four minutes of the interview, I am Ranchi, hmm. and then the next ten, eleven minutes, where a traditional interview looks at acads, current affairs, hmm. whatnot, were just about AI for me. Huh. And uh, IIT Delhi was a very special interview where, because there was only one professor hmm. from IIT Delhi, and they had called two subject matter experts from outside, so hmm. interview experts or whatever you want to call it. Huh. And that's a very good. I felt a very good yeah. perspective to that's have. That's unheard of. I've... Unheard of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and. Uh, so it was a really just a good conversation to have i felt i was talking to a friend rather than an interviewer mm. where we talked about how as a writer you know language processing models will affect me because mm. uh, that's what they asked me how do you think it would affect you and i told them about how so what i do a lot is i take these prompts uh, from anywhere now from ai as well mm. like give me some short story prompts mm. and i write short stories mm. and i was like curious so i fed it into gemini gpt 3.5 and a couple of other models and i was shocked at the results because i genuinely if someone just showed that to me that i have written this i couldn't make out that it was written with an ai and that is very scary yeah. for anyone who is in this sort of field yeah. that yeah for obvious Haan, reasons obviously right? so that was what the conversation revolved around hmm. and so on and so forth so very fun interview and let's take it to the other spectrum of like the worst interview like you gave the interview and you came out and you're like bhai ye kya tha maine bas what 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 were these past couple of minutes <laughs> i think uh, indoor i questioned it the most <laughs> <laughs> and funnily enough i think this is the experience of a lot, lot of, of our batchmates lot of people, yeah And, and so indoor specifically i think it's look trying to look at because we are the first batch of ipm from amranchi that yeah. has come out of amranchi yeah. so indoor specifically is trying to look at the end product of ipm imr yeah right and whether they are good enough obviously to fit into i am in indoor pgp yeah, yeah yeah right so um what happens is uh, the f- application form that you fill hmm. is given to the professors hmm. and they read it for 5 7 minutes before mm. they call you in. Mm. and they are reading it when you are called in so mm. one professor calls you and the other one is usually sitting on the screen reading it so one professor calls me in i walk in 
he gestures me to sit and the other professor is reading 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 ip bas bas so he questions me a little about ip and uh-huh. math and then starts grilling me okay which subjects do you have uh-huh. you ipm kids are always ranting about your holistic programs and this and that and whatever be the case so uh, yeah so that was the start of the interview the tone mm. of the interview did not feel the best right yeah. off the bat yeah, yeah yeah right and that made me nervous and fumble a little bit here and there yeah. and then um, in uh, general i am in door interviews have that sort of you know it feels yeah. more like a fight or a battle that uh-huh. you have to it was so after win. that they shifted to acads as they usually do uh-huh. and it was uh, proper grueling as in if they think i know an answer they move to the next answer don't let me finish huh. and they ask me stats they ask me maths they ask me eco they ask me bio bio EBS, evs bio oh. because i had mentioned it to them because i was specifically asking what holistic subjects did you have ah uh, makes sense okay fair enough so fair they enough. said okay you had evs you had bio tell me okay which chromosome makes you uh, like a guy or a girl the xx xy huh. thing and i was able to answer and then they went deeper into that hmm. and i didn't know <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're so, like i'm sorry itna hi pata hai yeah so uh, and then some gk questions also i wasn't aware of mm-hmm. totally so I came out of the indoor interview completely bamboozled like okay I genuinely felt this has gone not well at all I don't think I'll make it through huh. but I don't know I'm in the wait list right now hmm. looking at past year trends it will clear touch wood touch wood it, touch wood, huh. it should clear uh, whereas my calcutta interview went much better huh. where there also they asked me philosophy huh. right but I was able to answer much better and still uh, that didn't clear so two ends of the spectrum interviews mm. you never really know yeah. such a grueling process and then very confusing to get feedback on interviews and work on it mm. that's the biggest aspect of it yeah so that's why the prep is also so hard <laughs> cuz you can give a great mock or you can give a absolutely shit mock but your interview could go completely different yeah like there yeah. have been times where like a mock interview went you know fine or mm-hmm. i got some inputs but the actual interview for which i was preparing didn't go as well in exactly. fact it went in the completely different direction exactly exactly you never know what words the professor might yeah. catch on and drive the interview because many prep channels insist on okay you should be the one driving the interview hmm. but in my experience at least that's not the case because they they have the end call on what to discuss yeah so they drive the interview if you feel like you're driving the interview it's because they're letting you drive it yeah they're letting you steer the conversation that way they can very easily say no 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 we will talk about this no yeah. this right along with that like they're seeing not one or two they're seeing like 15 candidates in like a very specific time crunch it's day after day slot after slot yeah. so for them also yeah it's just like you know what Th- these are the set of things that i want to gauge and no matter where this person's <laughs> trying to take the conversation yeah. i have a very set yeah. goal of what i want to get out of this conversation i think fms interview was very much like that fms interviews are infamous for being ha huh. they're short Fast. to the point crisp and can you can you can you it's like a full process ha huh. so fms interview was like that where you know i am so fms was very different from an im interview hmm. where an im interview was averaging for me 40 minutes ish hmm. hmm. right and fms was close 7 8 minutes interview that's it that's it and uh, uh, so it is it is that much that even if you start uh, diverging from their point even a little bit they huh. correct you that we are not talking about this and we want to hear exactly this we want to this. hear exactly this do you know this or not mm-hmm. and move on move on move on move on okay so it it is just it that's the kind of process they have set ha huh. yeah <laughs> every yeah i mean spj imr doesn't do uh, one on one interviews they do group interviews group interviews right they have two rounds one which is also a bizarre experience <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's a really fun experience and uh, from our batch we had like i think uh, five or six people who ended up going till the interview round and after the first round it was just two of us who cleared it and right. what was really fun is that so R C R Vaishnavi. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say <laughs> R C R Vaishnavi because that's just ingrained. <laughs> yes, that's just ingrained in my mind. But my batchmate Vaishnavi. We were in the same panel for the second round of our 
group interview. Uh-huh. First round, though, okay. we gave it in different panels. She mm-hmm. was uh, shortlisted for the finance spec. I was shortlisted for the marketing spec. And first round is supposed to be more technical. Mm-hmm. The second round is supposed to be more about ethics. They're trying to see what kind of a person you are, mm-hmm. what kind of a manager you would make. Mm-hmm. And I really like that focus about them. But then the conversation just can go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like... When they're talking about finance, then they ask you about the ethics of finance. Do you think it's ethical? Do you think marketing is ethical? Is marketing a scam because you false advertise? And then, you know, then things are then tied on to what's going on in the world. So food farmer was something that was brought into the conversation then. Hmm. So it's just, you okay, have huh. no way of... Really knowing. Really knowing. And it's just, things are always... <laughs> Hard to predict, but it's also a very beautiful process. I feel like I found out more about myself. Mm-hmm. And I guess you could <laughs> concur to that. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, definitely. Interview prep is grueling, but you do learn. I learned about myself because they that's what interviews are about. They want you to tell them about yourself, huh. how you are as a person. And you can't do that unless you know. Right? <laughs> oh, right. Obviously. So you, you definitely introspect a lot. That is true. You do learn. <laughs> but it's very grueling. Yeah. Okay. Now that... Okay. Cat prep is done. Result came. Interview is done. Now, the results. <laughs> I, I feel like results... The whole waiting period between giving an interview and finally getting those results is uh, probably the hardest. It's... It is It is difficult. But... Uh, for, okay. I'll tell about hmm. my experience. My experience, yeah. I gave the interviews and... Uh, so the, my interviews lasted for about two months hmm. and by the end of it, you know, with the, all the travel and everything, I was just so tired. I came home. Do you know how many interviews you gave? Uh, around 14, 15, something huh. along those lines. Okay. Uh, total, right? Huh. And, in uh, the span of two months? Yeah, something like that. And uh, in the middle of that, I also gave four or five interviews for SIP. Ah, uh, for our internship. For our internship, right? Hmm. Uh, so those as well and those were in Bangalore so then I had to go <laughs> Bangalore, Kolkata, Bangalore, Kolkata hmm. yeah so anyway uh, I was very exhausted and I was very done with it I was like okay whatever had to be done is done now hmm. uh, it's just waiting so yeah. I'll wait <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't nervous initially hmm. and then FMS came out first in my set of calls I think huh, FMS I came think out so first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then uh, FMS I got in the wait list but uh, doesn't look like it will clear to that extent. Then Calcutta came out, same thing. Huh. Koi code came out, same thing. And that, like the Koi code result after FMS and Calcutta, you know, Koi code was the only sort of place that was left for me personally, where I I had a very strong inclination that I want to get in here. Yeah. And uh, very nervous to, because Koi code had announced the date of the interview. Huh. Nobody else had announced it, but Koi code had said, okay, it will come out on this day. Huh. <laughs> that entire day I was just at work, not able to work with my hands, huh. randomly shaking and, mm-hmm. and then the quick quote results came out, then the site went down and I couldn't check my results <laughs> and then every 15 minutes checking and then okay it's going through, okay it's not and all of that and finally quick quote also the core course I didn't make it into mm. the program and I think that's when a lot of disappointment hit, hmm. where I have, again, same sort of stuff when I didn't get, get an interview yeah. call of A, B, and L. But fortunately enough, I made it to some of the programs, and huh. still, I'm still in a good space, huh. right? I'm still in a better place than a lot of people. Yeah. So I count, I still count myself fortunate for that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, disappoint, a lot of disappointments along the way, a lot of places where I've Felt, uh, felt it. The system was unjust, maybe. But that that was my experience and mm. my feelings. Right? Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Okay, so I mean, after all of this, would you say it was all worth it? <laughs> I, see, I think the fact that I don't have an answer to this question also says a lot. Hmm. I have questioned this myself multiple times. Yeah. After the Koi code result, before the other results, I felt it was not worth it. Because for a long time, my best call was IIT Delhi. Hmm. Which again, no offense to IIT Delhi, but someone of my percentile, it might not be unreasonable to expect something better. better hmm. right? 
so for a long time having that as your best convert and i think what was tougher was that uh, you know cat groups are common the results come out and a yeah. lot of dms this that did you get in mm. did you get in and then seeing a lot of converts go through and then mera hi nahi ho raha yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, you know some relatives then what was the point of the high percentile oh. that stings man yeah <laughs> कि अच्छा इतनी परसेंटेज आ गई तो हुआ क्या उसे एंड देन आई डोंट हैव एन आंसर टू इट अरे व्हाट शुड आई टेल देम या यू आर राइट बट आई फील लाइक आई थिंक दैट्स व्हाई अ कन्वर्सेशन लाइक दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो दैट मे बी पीपल नो व्हाट दे आर गेटिंग देमसेल्व्स इनटू राइट एग्जैक्टली सो या सो एज यू सेड इट आई feel like दैट क्वेश्चन बीइंग इन द बैक ऑफ माय हेड इवन एट माय बेस्ट केस सिनेरियो हम्म says a lot and i feel feel like if there's one thing i could have told myself mm. before i started this cat journey mm. is that there are other options maybe that would suit my profile more mm. that would still enable me to pursue what i want to do mm. and i should look at that Just, cat is not an end all be all there's right. other things right. that you But can similar do. to what i maybe did in ge where ge after 12th for someone inclined in math is an end all be all mm mm-hmm. hey right. uh, so maybe i should have explored that more mm. and not just trusted on cat blindly almost which i feel was something i did mm-hmm. maybe some <laughs> other options there <laughs> that makes sense i think this is a good place to sort of wrap up the podcast because yeah. we've talked about the whole journey we've talked about you know how you think about it now right. after everything. after it all after everything yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's it for this episode of life's great and other lies i really hope you guys enjoyed it i am glad that we had this conversation because i feel like there's that added element of you know an ipm student giving cat that everybody who's writing cat uh, sorry i writing ip mat thinks that you know what ip mat ke baad to i am going to give cat cuz that's the system you're getting into right. that's always there at the back of the right. mind but what does actually giving cat after ip mat look like right what's yeah. the experience what's right. the journey and what's the journey for somebody who as you can say might not have the most you know shiny profile as exactly. some of these institutes would want exactly what exactly. does that look like cuz <laughs> that's a different journey right so that's it i will see you on the next episode bye bye <laughs>